The day is finally here. Game one of the NBA Finals between the Mavericks and Celtics. We will have a best bet for you coming up in just a little bit. But first, we've got to talk about MLB because combined, Mark Zinno and I are a perfect 6-0 and on the show the last two days with baseball picks. No pressure, Mark. You're starting us off on today's double play. Yeah, no pressure at all. And look, it's it's been a very good run for us here on the Morning Wager. All the more reason for you guys to hit that subscribe button and check out the Morning Wager every single day because, well, you know, hey, we're doing pretty well. Let's not pat ourselves on the back here too much. But I am going to go back to the well here with the Los Angeles Dodgers. They were a client play yesterday, thought the price was wrong, uh, didn't think they should have been an underdog. And, well, Paul Skeens proved me wrong. Moreover, I should have never trusted James Paxton because he's a hump like we have talked about several times on this program. But that said, going back to the Dodgers today against the Pirates, who are, the Dodgers are now in danger of being swept by the Pittsburgh Pirates, which seems like pretty wild to me, just as a concept that the Los Angeles Dodgers would be swept mm. by the Pittsburgh Pirates. They get Walker Bueller on the mound. He hasn't been fantastic uh, since coming off the IL, but he hasn't exactly been terrible. You know, he's had one really solid start where we went six innings, gave up no runs, but He's been mostly flirting in the quality start range. Around six innings, three runs. Again, nothing special, but this is a Dodgers team that can support that. But they all are also facing Bailey Falter. Bailey Falter is a left-handed pitcher who I've faded a lot last year and this year, and some of that to my chagrin because he hasn't been terrible this year. In fact, he hasn't allowed a single run in two of his last three starts, but both of those were on the road, and he's a guy this year, when you look at his splits, um, he's he's – better at home than he is on the road, but uh, he's, you know, a guy that, that has been a little erratic at times. That said, the Dodgers absolutely crucify left-handed pitching. They are top two in OPS, batting average, and WRC plus against left-handed pitching this year, and I have to trust that this lineup is not going to get swept by the Pittsburgh Pirates here. Tough number for us to look at just because the Dodgers are such heavy favorites knowing that they won't be swept. I'm willing to lay the one and a half here. And even though the Dodgers aren't a great run line team, I'm willing to lay the one and a half here uh, with the Dodgers in the fact that they just might just come out and bust this team up here and that Bailey Falter could be out of this thing pretty quickly. So give me the Dodgers minus one and a half here at a moderate uh, minus 115, minus 120 price range. Well, after taking the Reds each of the last three days against the Rockies, I am forced to go in a different direction today, Mark, because that series is now over. So let's look to my backyard. <laughs> progressive field where the guardians are hosting the Royals this afternoon. These teams did not get to play yesterday. It was a rain out here in Cleveland. No, I will not be attending today's game. Your boys feeling a little bit under the weather. So uh, I'll go to the next day game, but not today. Now, when I do go to these getaway day games, thank you for the applause. Uh, as you know, I often like to bet the under that's no secret. Our commenters uh, follow along on that, but today I am looking at the over seven and a half with Singer and Bybee on the mound. The Guardians are somehow 11-1 and one in Bybee's starts this year, Mark, but he's got a 5 2 ERA at home. He gave up five runs here to the White Sox, six runs here to the Angels. You look at Singer for the Royals, he's not been as effective on the road as he's been at home. The ERA jumps about a point and a half. The whip uh, is substantially higher as well. It goes from sub-1 to about 1-5. All four of Singer's quality starts this year have come at home at Kauffman Stadium. But what's become more interesting to me this season is progressive field playing as an over park. An average of 8.8 .8 runs per game scored here. And that may have something to do with these mo some modifications that were made to the stadium in the offseason. I'm going to tweet something out about this later today. Follow me at Brian Power underscore wins. But they used to have these shipping containers in the outfield, Mark. It was really embarrassing because they were afraid of low attendance, so they just covered up the really crappy seats in the upper deck with these shipping containers. Well, they removed them in the offseason, and it appears that there is evidence now that the ball is traveling out of the park a lot quicker. The wind is blowing out, and that may have something to do with the increase in run production. Again, I'll tweet this video out. You can make uh, that decision for yourself. But... Over seven and a half Guardians Royals is my half of the double play to go along with Zinno on the Dodgers minus one and a half. Let us know what you think of our picks in the comments section down below and let us know who you are betting Thursday in Major League Baseball as well. Our NBA Finals game one best bet is coming up in just a bit. But first, Mark, let them know what you got cooking at wagertalk.com. Guys, the 5% play has been there since, what is it, Monday? Uh, we've had it posted, so go and grab it. Uh, I've added a baseball play in there as well for 
this evening, but four and one run on 5% plays in the NBA this postseason. So we've stayed hot when we've chosen these spots here. We've been very profitable. We expect to do that again. Go to wt.buzz slash mz. Get that 5% play for game one here. And I will say this much. Numbers are moving, guys. So uh, if there's something out there you like and you see, you better move fast on it uh, because we're starting to see that game day sort of influx of money coming in here early this morning, BP, and, and it's going to change some things. So think fast, act fast. Go to wt.buzz slash mz fast and get that 5% play. Yeah, and I've got a 4% best bet up myself. Uh, 32 and 17 run in the NBA. You go back nearly a full calendar year to the start, more than a full calendar year, in fact, to the start of last year's NBA Finals. 95, 65, and two plus 65 units with all NBA selections. I was four and one in last year's Finals, including a 4% best bet winner on the under in game one of Heat Nuggets. I've had this 4% locked and loaded for game one of Mavs Celtics for a few days. Head on over wt.buzz slash bp right now to pick it up. I should be adding some Major League Baseball as well. All right, Zeno, you mentioned it. Numbers on the move. We've seen over money hit the market today for Mavs Celtics, the opener of the NBA Finals. It is finally here after this interminable wait. Uh, spread, still Boston minus six and a half. We're seeing two, what, 215 and a half here, two 16s even in the market on the total. But yeah. we're hit, looking at the player prop market for our show best bet. Yeah, let's let's go to Jalen Brown here because he has been an incredible part of what the Celtics success has been this postseason. And with all the focus on Jason Tatum here, Brown has begun to take advantage throughout this postseason. His points prop is set at 23 and a half, which feels kind of low, especially considering he went over this total in every single game in the series against Indiana. Now, you go the two previous series against Cleveland and Miami. Both of them lasted five games. He went over this number in five of the ten games against them. But now we're looking at, again, we're in a situation of nine of 14 postseason games. Also, at home, Jalen Brown has gone over this number. And we have six, uh, what are we, eight home games. He's gone over it in five of eight home games. So he's comfortable here. He's going to be able to make threes, I think, with all the focus that they're going to look at. And plus, now with Chris Tapps Porzingis back, it's going to have one less defender to stand in front of Jalen Brown. This is a low number we get here. Let's take advantage of it. Brown goes over 23 and a half tonight, BP. Yeah, I think just looking big picture in this series, one of the – I think we mentioned this for every Boston series. If they're hitting their threes, things are going yes. to go well. But specifically in this series, what's going to happen if they're hitting their threes – it's going to open up a path to the rim. Dallas has been incredible defending the rim throughout this postseason. I mean, incredible. I mean, teams are, are at the rim. The percentage is absurdly low. But if Boston's hitting their threes, it's also going to open up scoring opportunities at the rim, in my opinion. There's going to be a lot of threes in this series overall. These teams were, I believe, one and two. I know Boston was one. I think Dallas was two in attempts per game over uh, the course of the year. But that is the – and Brown's going to be a big part of that, obviously. You know, if the threes are falling for Boston, it's going to open up opportunities on the inside. So, yeah, Jalen Brown over 23-and-a-half points is your show best bet. Let us know what you think of that down in the comments section below. If you like what you heard today on the show, or if you just want to be supportive, smash that thumbs up. Give us a like. Hit subscribe. It's not hard to do. You hit the subscribe button. We always appreciate your support here on Wager Talk TV. Morning Wager, we're giving you free picks in baseball and the NBA every Monday through Friday. Mark and I, we will be back tomorrow to recap what we saw tonight in game one and maybe look ahead a little bit to game two. Plus, hopefully we'll still be talking about a perfect MLB record as well. He's Mark Zeno. I'm Brian Power. Until next time, let's catch some tickets. <laughs> <laughs> <Fuck yeah. laughs>